welcome folks to another live stream um hope you're all well i will be sharing with you lots of driving test tips in this stream i'll be giving some updates and some information some you may already know some maybe not i'll be going through this report sheet of someone who failed his driving test recently <clears throat> i have some signs up there as well which i welcome you to have a go at and see if you can uh let me know what they mean and of course as always i will be answering your questions and reading your comments out live as they come in and speaking of which the first one here is from Wojciech Vrobel my number one fan i'd say saying hello hello Wojciech Jing dobre or as we say at this time of the day dobre vietor so you're very welcome lauren o'neill says hello hello lauren thanks for tuning in noah thomas uh, Nyanku, good evening to you too noah smashy rashi not a great name hi dan thanks for the dedication to helping people that's my pleasure you know get in lane with the great dan and sean is ready to learn that's good that's good the learning never stops including for me so i want to start off with some um <clears throat> announcements i suppose are, are kind of like um updates let's say um and sorry i'm just adjusting something here on screen here now i'm just want to check something out there sorry um okay um yeah I, I, there's some there's i i think i made a mistake there's comments coming up there over the report sheet i'm just going to see if i can uh, get rid of that maybe um uh, let's see how do i do that just bear with me now for a second um anyway i i i, I i'm not gonna bother with that so anyway a few updates uh first of all folks just on driving and the test okay so as you may have known as you may have heard about recently there has been um a 10 month extension to learner permits okay so 10 months uh previously the learner permit extension finished at the end of october 2020 but now if your permit goes out of date from the first of november uh, 2020 all the way to the end of July this year 21 there is a 10 month extension which you can avail of now it does depend on uh, previous extensions that can be a factor as well if you want to know if it's uh, valid your extension then what you need to do is you need to go to www.ndls.ie you'll see it there in the blue and there's a really good uh, expiry calculator so when you're on there you'll you'll see it highlighted so just click learner permit not driver's license unless you want to check the validity of your driver's license as well but if you're on this channel you probably don't have a full license just yet uh, you can check that out there put in the date of expiry and it will the, the original date on your permit and it will tell you then if the 10 month extension applies to you and how long it's valid and when you need to apply so you can check that out there it's just to, as a, as a nod to people who have um, struggled to get lessons and get the test done. So a 10 month extension on permits that originally expire uh, from the 1st of November, 2020 to the end of July this month, 2021. Okay. You don't need to do anything. Um, the guards will know, the driving examiners will know it's all part of their systems. They, their systems will be updated, updated to reflect that. You don't need to do anything. You don't need a letter. You don't need a new permit, nothing like that. And if you have applied for, uh, an application to the NDLS to renew your permit um, you should cancel that then if you are availing of the extensions so that you don't add to the waiting list there okay uh, of course you can renew online if you have a public services card and a mygov ID it's much more convenient if you can avail of that and um, that's the, the best way of doing it and that's the future eventually of, of renewing on of renewing your license online in the future the test the customer service agents in the RSA cannot deal with you in terms of um, offering you a new test or offering to change your date. That's not the way it works anymore. In previous times, they could do that, but not, not anymore. So if you want to manage your booking, handle your booking in any way, you have to go on to myroadsafety.ie. You can see it up there in the white, just under the uh, NDLS website www.myroadsafety.ie you can get to that site via the rsa site as well and that's where you handle everything to do with your driving test okay from 
applying, uh, you can up update details on your permit. That's the one-stop shop for applying and managing your whole driving experience from learner to full license, okay? That's the place to go because customer service agents can't book or cancel or adjust your driving test over the phone or over email or anything like that. Um, essential workers will be able to fill out an online form to say that they're essential and that they need a full license for the course of their duties and they will be prioritized and the powers that be in the RSA will get back to you eventually uh, offering you uh, a test. And you might get offered a certain uh, window of opportunity for a test within, within certain dates but you have to pick those and if they suit you go for that then okay but for anything to do with the driving test myroadsafety.ie that's the place to go okay um sometimes i know some instructors have had difficulty uploading edt lessons recently because the portal is undergoing maintenance probably doesn't affect you folks too much it's just a thing that goes on with, with a lot of lessons being uploaded now the the portal has been down in terms of the instructor's ability to upload lessons so it has been undergoing a good bit of maintenance recently so just just bear that in mind the driving test itself, 96,000 on the waiting list at the moment is the latest figures I've heard. Um, and three quarters of those people are under the age of 40, which is what most people on online here with me are probably under the age of 40 as well. Not everyone, but most. The highest waiting list is Tala in Dublin, which has over 10,000, which is nearly the same amount of people that's waiting in, in all of Cork. So Tala has the highest, over 10,000. Uh, they are hoping to get that down as new testers come on board. So 40 new testers started in June. They hope to have 40 more by the end of the summer. They hope to increase it from six tests a day to at least seven, maybe doing some on Saturdays as well. And hopefully that the waiting list will come down significantly as the year goes on. But it's hard to see that happening really because that doesn't include any new tests or any new applicants that come in. So but anyway, there are efforts there to try and bring the waiting list down, okay? Now, if you are not essential, okay, if you're not an essential worker and you've applied for your test, they are starting to um, give people dates who are not essential workers, okay? That's done based on when they applied. So the, the earlier people applied, the more likely they're getting offered a date. That is starting to happen now as, the, as we kind of gradually get back to some kind of normality and as the vaccination program rolls out so small batches of non-essential workers are being offered tests at the moment uh, that's been going on since the end of may actually yeah and, it, and it'll continue to go on i assume over the summer um the rsa hope to clear the backlog by the end of the year and have it down to about 12 or 14 weeks that's the plan might be a little optimistic but that's the plan anyway let's hope it works moving on then the theory test so yes the theory test is um, there is a big backlog there as well. I think it's, it could be up to 120,000 now waiting for a theory test. There is an online theory test going on on a pilot basis. Between four and 6,000 a week are getting done on that basis. But I think some people might be having a, bit, a little bit of difficulty with that. With the, because I think it's only Windows computers. So if you have a Mac or a tablet or a phone, I don't think you can do a theory test on that at the moment anyway. So... If anybody's had that kind of experience or any trouble with that, just let us know in the comments section. They are hoping to do between twenty-five and 50,000 theory tests a month uh, once once the you know the summer goes on and when, the, when uh, they can hopefully open more test centres as well. Uh, NCT. Some learners have been emailing me about an NCT going out of date, the disc is out of date, but they have uh, an extension that's been given to them by the NCT. So the best way to check if your NCT is valid is to do the following, okay? Go on to the NCT web, www.nct, uh, or NCTS, I think, sorry, .ie, I think is the website, but just Google NCT anyway, and then on the website, check, uh, just just click on the drop down the drop down menu that says check NCT validity, so it'll be probably just, just along the top, okay? So check, there'll be a drop down menu, check NCT validity, type in your registration and then whatever that says then if that gives you the you know that that tells you that your nct is in date for the next four or six months or whatever the extension is then that's what the tester is going to see as well because the tester is going to use the same kind of uh, website to check that your nct is in date i had a girl there a few weeks ago who emailed me who was concerned about that and i, and I can understand the concern because you know you see the the nct disc is is out of date on the car but it says it has three months and you don't want to rock up to the test with an out-of-date NCT. Anyway, she did. Uh, she did what I said there. Just She checked the online on the website. 
perfectly fine, gave her the extension. The tester did something as well on his tablet. It was fine. The test went ahead, no problem. She passed. Happy as Larry. Okay then, so um, also I have a link in the description here for a great book if you want to check it out. It's an Amazon link. Um, it's The book is called Get It by Brian O'Leary. It's a great little book, uh, paperback. Just a really, really nice book about how to pass the test. It goes through all the signs, goes through the main questions. Um, and it's a it's a very informative read if you want to check it out. Uh, with that link, I might I may get a small commission as well. But it's definitely worth checking out that book. Link is Amazon link in the description. Okay, it could be a nice addition to your driving lessons and to these videos as well. I've also been doing some short videos recently. I I when I put up my first short video this week, I think it was about some uh some bright spark walking out in front of. Uh, in front of an instructor's car and turning his back. I didn't realize that it was a better version for YouTube. So it's YouTube is just what that means is YouTube is just just sampling the shorts. So it it doesn't go into my shorts option if you know what I mean. Um, kind of like, like TikTok, it, it goes into my main video channel. So when the shorts become more widely used and uh more accessible, let's say on YouTube, it, it may go into that. But for now, it's just on the main channels. But anyway, I'm I'm just thinking of doing doing more and more short videos that are under a minute long just to highlight some of the difficulties you see it might see on the road some of the mistakes that get made and just so you can be aware of it and so you can be more more alert to it okay so hope to have one or two more short shorts this week okay so hope you're enjoying those okay then so i'm going to get onto this test report sheet here and the reason i chose this test report sheet was because well there's a lot of marks first of all which is unfortunate for your man that failed but also the chap, he actually was able to give me some good feedback. So he gave me feedback on what he thought went wrong and two or three important things that the tester said to him, said to him, okay? So I'm always more likely to use the report sheets from people who actually tell me what happened in the test. It's not exactly ideal if someone just emails me, emails me a report sheet and doesn't give me any information. That doesn't really help me too much. Uh, the more information you give me about how you failed or why you failed, then the better it is for me, I can learn from that and I can maybe target the feedback in a more detailed and more specific way, okay? So I'm gonna get into that driving test report sheet here now. Uh, I can see there's a couple of people uh, commenting there and a few people have had a go at the signs, I think. One person anyway has had a go at the signs there. Uh, Wojciech, I think so, I'll get down to his comments in a minute. So I'm um, some, some really good feedback on this report sheet now that you can learn from, okay? But let's get to a few comments there first, folks. Get, maybe I can answer some questions and get down through the comments that are that are flying in there. Um, Smashy Rashi, I think Sean was last ready to learn. Merobot, hello to you, Merobot. Good to have you. John Ryan, great work. Thank you very much, John. Thanks for tuning in. Shane Grant, hello to you too, Shane Grant. Sarah O'Dwyer, hi, Dane. Hope you're well. Was driving around Wexford the other week and I was wondering why everything looked so familiar. It was from watching all your videos. That's right. I am based in Wexford, so the majority of my videos will have uh, scenery from Wexford. Yeah, the odd few from Enniscorthy and a couple from Cork as well. But yeah, mainly Wexford. Uh, Jansen Madri guy, I think. Hi, well, Dane. Love your videos. Really healthy. You're just good to hear, Jansen. Thanks for tuning in. Nina uh, Hidashelli. Uh, hello to you. Hello to you too, Nina. Joy Monus, hi Dane, failed twice in the last month, same points for turning right and reverse around the corner, some tips please. I don't know what you mean by turning right, is it observation turning right, position turning right, um, reverse around the corner, there's lots of tips that I, I don't like, it depends on what, what happened, like I always say on the reverse, the slower you go on the reverse around the corner the better. Now you don't want to go like really 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 slow and drag the whole thing out like by five minutes but generally speaking if you have clutch control really good clutch control and that then can be the basis of a good reverse because if you're going really really slow and you're doing the reverse in a slow controlled manner well then that lays the foundations for good observation it lays the foundation for good steering and it kind of just will eventually lead to more confidence so if you want to give me more detailed information there Joyce and Monas I will be glad to help you CJ Jiver, great. I'm always being uh, great. I'm always being asked about the test report. Good to be here. Is that is that clear? I, I CJ Jiver, is that clear? At Daily, I think uh, f uh, fellow instructor. I think it might be. I'll, I'll I'm sure she let me know if it is. But good to see you anyway, CJ Jiver. 
Jillian McGrath, Joyce, Joyce and Monas, watch his video about reversing around the corner. It's so good. And just keep practicing. Thank you very much, Jillian. You, you managed to give a compliment and uh, massage my ego there in the and give the other fella a good advice in the one comment. So thank you very much for that. Noah Thomas Nyankyu, is there a minimum amount of time you have to wait before doing a second driving test? There used to be a, a minimum time of, I think it was either 10 working days or two weeks, but I'm not aware of any at the moment. If there is a minimum time, no, it's fairly small. It's only a matter of weeks anyway. But if any if anybody wants to shed more light on that, please do it. I've never really seen it have, have it as an issue, but I think it's I think it's about 10 days, two weeks. Uh, Maple Leaf is a very cautious driver. Good. How to solve this? Uh, well, it's kind of like Dr. Now says on his program, uh, My 600 Pound Life. There was a woman on it saying, Oh, Dr. Now, I have so many uh, temptations. I, I'm always stuffing this food down my throat. How, how do I stop? And then Dr. Now says, Don't do it. So that's a, kind of a side story there, but not unrelated to you, Maple Leaf. If you're very cautious, you need to go faster on certain times and you need to judge the road ahead. Do be cautious if there's loads of potholes, parked cars, speed bumps. But I think the more experience you get, you'll get better at judging that, as well as the more lessons you get. And Wojciech Vrobel. So Wojciech has had a go at the science here, and if I if I think I know him like I do, I'd say he's going to get them all right. So number one, no entry. Absolutely. You're probably going to get asked. I'd say, like, I'd be pretty sure you're going to get asked one five and seven on your test here folks okay number one number five number seven i'd be shocked if you don't get asked one five and seven okay so Wojciech got one right number one right um no entry number two he says dead end street yep so no true road number two it's a dead end and uh, number three series of dangerous bends that's correct number four is roadworks yeah roadworks ahead number five is clearway you will be asked that probably uh, clearway is no stopping or parking number six road narrows from both sides correct uh, number seven is a pedestrian only street. Absolutely. Uh, you, you will get asked that, I, I'm sure. Pedestrian only street. There may be an information plate before that uh, sign number seven there. Just to, just to let you know what time the uh, street is pedestrianized on. Number eight, turn left. Yes, yeah, so you typically see number eight on a roundabout as in turn left now. Like, like you have to go left now. And number nine is hospital. So well done there, Wojciech. All, all good there. Uh, all the signs spot on there. So I'll leave the comment there the comments for now there with Wojciech's last comment and we will get straight into this report sheet here now as you can see folks it's um it's probably not the best um it's probably not the best report sheet that you've seen um he failed the test pretty well if you if you pardon the pun um he he got 30, to the best of my knowledge, he got 31 grade twos and one grade three. So he got enough marks here, this chap, God love him. He got enough marks to fail the test three and a half times over, okay? And he would have failed anyway on position, observation, and clutch alone. So it's, you know, he, he this, this fella clearly wasn't ready for the test. So let's just see what the tester said first of all, okay? She had a note there. The tester gave him some good good solid information about his driving he said that the grade three mark he got there on reaction to hazards was for believe it or not looking in his mirrors too much on the roundabout instead of looking ahead and being aware of, of his position sometimes the testers will throw a mark down under hazards if they don't really know where else to put it or if it kind of falls between a few marks like i would have thought maybe observation on roundabouts might might be suitable there or even maybe position if he went out of position but it's really up to the tester, I mean, so he put it on hazards. So that's what the candidate said to me, that the grade three mark on hazards was because he was looking back too much, looking in his mirrors too much on the roundabout. Yes, it is good to keep an eye on the mirrors on the roundabout, but it's like everything. It's all about balance. You can't be looking in the mirrors all the time when you're, you know, on or exiting a roundabout because you need to be aware of where you're going. Where you're going to is far more important uh, than where you're coming from, okay? Tester also said that there was far too much coasting in this test, way too much clutch use. The candidate said that he had a habit of putting the clutch in. Well he, well, he has to put the clutch in when he starts the car. So his car won't start. It's like my car. It won't start unless the clutch is in. And he would keep it in then as he turns the keys. And he said it, it's, it's kind of a habit from that. Uh, it's kind of a subconscious habit from that, that he keeps it in 
Um, it's you know, I, I, I mean, you should be able to shake that. Like, I mean, it's it's essential to put the clutch in when you start a car. Fair enough, but but you don't need it when you're coming to roundabouts and stopping and all that kind of stuff. So the tester said he was using the clutch way, way, way too much. So he was clutching for too long when stopping, for example. He was keeping the clutch in for too long in between gear changes, basically coasting, and he got four marks there. And that, that on its own is enough to fail. Like you know, like four marks on coasting, that's just a fail anyway. Because if you get four in the one area, you'll fail on that. And the tester also gave him another crucial piece of advice, and that was that he was too much to the left. So if you look up at position there on, on the straight and on bends there, for example, so he was way too much to the left all the time. Um, he just seemed to be too close to the curb. He may have he may have scraped the curb once, um, but too close to the curb. You see, you have to judge the road ahead of you. And you ha as you're driving ahead, you have to ask yourself, is that kind of a narrow lane? Is it a kind of a medium-sized lane? Is it a wide lane? And you have more scope then to adjust your position the wider the lane is. So the more narrower narrower the lane, the more likelihood is that you'll be just central all the time, more or less, you know. And the wider the lane, then you may be able to adjust left or right, which I'll get into more detail on. But that's the three things the tester said anyway. Too much mirrors on the roundabout, too much coasting, and way too much to the left all the time. Now... The candidate himself then, so what his thoughts on it, I also found interesting, okay? So this guy is originally from a country in the Middle East, okay? Uh, it's He has been driving over eight years in his home country uh, with a full license, and he never had any trouble, never had any, never had any major issues uh, in his home place. But you see, folks, th this, th what... A lot of people who may come from places other than Ireland, like be it America or Canada or India, Pakistan or the UAE, whatever, driving in Ireland is a completely different kettle of fish to driving on big open roads in the Middle East or in America. Okay, The standard of driving is a lot higher, a lot different here. The test is, the test is a very high standard as well. And just because you have a full license in say the Middle East or America or Canada, that doesn't really carry much weight here where driving is completely different, okay? Uh, very often the roads are completely different and even the cars are more often than not going to be manual instead of automatic, okay? So it is very, very different. And he admitted that as well in his email. He said the difference is, is like night and day from driving where he's from in the Middle East to driving in Ireland. He thought he had a pretty good knowledge of driving. He did get his 12 lessons. His, he 12 EDT lessons. I'm um, surprised he didn't get the reduced EDT, like the six if he had the full license, but he done, he done the 12 anyway. But I don't think he got three or four or five or six lessons before the actual test. So that leads me to believe he was probably a little bit rusty then. If you only get the 12 EDT lessons and then you don't get any more lessons, you, you might be okay, you might be, but it's a risk. Like you, It's always good to get uh, at least uh, three, four lessons in the weeks and days before your test, just to freshen things up, like get used to the routes, to kind of iron out a few bad habits. I strongly recommend that, no matter how confident or how good you think you are. He admits he was a bit casual. He lacked the discipline to drive on Irish roads. The way he's driving would probably be grand in the Middle East, but it, it's not going to butter many parsnips here in Ireland. So he, he lacked a com completely lacked the discipline to drive here. Um, he was getting his routines all wrong. He said he was, in, instead of checking mirrors first, he was indicating and going down the gears, and then he might check mirrors. I didn't see any marks on mirrors there. If I just assume an observation, maybe, but not mirrors. Um, maybe observation change of lanes could be could be that, yeah. So he had he was that's one like he wasn't doing mirrors first. He was he was indicating first and then mirrors. He said he was not focused enough. I think I said that. I think he, I think he was saying the lessons were a little bit focused on the reverse and turnabout and roundabouts and maybe not on general driving and reaction to hazards and stuff like that. But that's 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 I'm not hundred percent sure on that. He also said he stalled during the reverse. Now, I don't see any mark here on the reverse on the corner, so maybe he stalled on the reverse part of the turnabout. Maybe that's what he meant. Uh, and, you know, you don't, you lose a mark, like, but as long as you don't panic, you, you, you should be able to recover. He said he panicked, he got stressed, it was a very busy road, uh, and he admits, finally, he admits he had a lot of bad habits still that he has to shake off, um, and he, he, he needs to get more lessons, more practice, and hopefully he'll have a good chance then um, the next time. So let's go down to one from the top then. Uh, number one there, uh, the first mark up there, rules and checks. So this, this comes down to rules of the road. 
it pretty much means that he got three or more questions or road signs wrong at the start. This is not ideal. Because as well as losing a grade a grade two mark, it, it just it kinda of, it could it could hurt your confidence and, and it could hurt the tester's confidence in you as well. You know, you, you always want to get off to a good start. Um you wanna kinda of answer those questions and, and answer those road signs quick in a quick, snappy, efficient way so the tester knows that this fella or this lady has done his or her homework, okay? Uh so already then if you get three or more questions wrong, you're already starting from a weaker position because now you, you now you can only afford to get seven marks instead of eight if you know what i mean because your nine is the limit nine or more mistakes is a fail nine or more grade two marks is a fail so that was unfortunate i didn't obviously didn't study the rules of the road or i didn't didn't study them enough uh, i have links in the description if you want to see some of my videos on rules of the road and some uh, links to some of the common questions as well i did a live stream there a few months ago on common questions Next position on the straight. So, like I said, we we got we learned from the feedback here that that the tester said he was too left all the time. Now, position on the straight. It's all about looking at what kind of road you have ahead of you. Ask yourself, like, there's generally going to be three types of road widths. Okay, if we keep it simple, it's going to be narrow, like your really narrow, tight country lane. It's going to be kind of like a medium sized road, like a, like you know, like a decent town urban road. Or you could have like a really wide road, like like a national road or that kind of stuff. There's going to be kind of three, more or less three types of, of road widths there. Now, the more narrow the lane, the more central you're going to have to be. If the road on, on the straight, if it's a little bit wider, well then yes, you can afford to keep a little bit left of centre. Generally speaking, you should keep left of centre. But you can't keep left of centre if you have a really, really narrow lane because you're just you're misjudging the road then and you're applying a one size fits all policy, which is not how to become a good fully licensed driver. You have to judge the road individually. So the tester said he was misjudging he was, the tester said he was keeping left all the time. And that is again it's it's, it's applying a, a a a rule that is not taking into consideration the circumstances. Position on bends. So, if the he got three on this as well, like, like he he nearly failed on position alone. To be honest with you, but on bends, like if the bend disappears to the right up ahead, so the, the if the bend goes off to say two o'clock up ahead, generally speaking on that type of bend, you should keep left of centre. But as I said, if it's a very 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 narrow lane with not much room for error, then you have to kind of keep centre then. Uh, so maybe there was an issue there. He wasn't judging the width of the lane. Uh, maybe he was too too much to the right on um, a right bend. And on a left bend, then, you can be more central. So I suspect that he was probably keeping too much to the left on a left bend. So if the bend disappears to the left up ahead, so if it disappears at around 11 o'clock, say, or 10 o'clock, in that case, you should be a little bit more central because you're going to find the easier then when you're driving just to kind of just kind of get a bit of a better view ahead if you were a bit central on the left bends, okay? As always, it depends on the lane. Don't forget the road markings as well. You have to be, you know, aware of the road markings, and not to go over, say, hatch lines, for example, or stop on yellow boxes, or stop on pedestrian crossings, things like that. Position at roundabouts. So this is where you have to be very, very aware of um, your signs and your road markings. Okay. So the tester is saying that he was out of position at roundabouts. There's only the one. But he was out of position. There's a couple of areas where this can this can come into play, and I, and I want you to be very careful of this because it's it's something that you might not notice yourself doing. First of all, as you're coming up to the roundabout, watch out for the little curve. Like when you come up to the stop line or the yield line at the roundabout, very often it's not going to be that like dead straight. Very often it's going to just curve a little bit to the left. So then you need to bring your wheel. Sorry, get my hands. Up. You need to bring your wheel to the left as well. And that can help you avoid going over the white center circle of the mini roundabout, for example. When you're on the bigger roundabout as well, make sure you have good lane discipline. That you don't kind of straddle the middle lane or, or straddle the left too much or straddle the, the inside curb of the roundabout. Watch out for your markings like your arrows. You have to make sure you're in the right lane. Generally speaking, you need to be in the left lane going straight. But that completely depends on the signs and road markings. So if there's two lanes... And the arrow is saying be in the right lane for going straight. Well, then you have to obey the arrow that you see in front of you, okay? 
the road markings and signs will always take priority over the general advice on um, <coughs> rules of the road. I'm not sure if it was to do with that, but he lost the mark anyway on that. And then position at roundabouts, maybe exiting the roundabout, he could have went over some hatch lines. Maybe he wasn't left enough exiting the roundabout. Maybe he swerved a little bit. Maybe he lost a little bit of control of the wheel. Who knows? It's 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 hard to say. I didn't get much information on on the position at roundabouts, but that there what what some of the things that could be uh, could have went wrong there. Moving on then to observation. Moving off. Okay. Now he admits here he had like no discipline. This chap had zero discipline moving off. He would like he'd probably check his blind. He probably check his blind spot first, and then he might indicate, and then he might put it into first gear, and then he might put the handbrake doing ev doing everything all all backwards basically. I will always say to, I always say to people like if you're moving off from the left hand side of the road, just keep it nice and simple. One, two, three. You'll see that in any videos I have. One, two, three. One gear stick so stick it in first gear. Two indicate to the right. Now you can you can have a look at your mirrors as you're indicating anyway, but but the idea is that you check your mirrors and blind spot last at the end. So it's more fresh and more up to date. I mean, I'm sure that makes sense to you. You can still check your mirrors while you're before you're indicating if you want. I guess no big deal. But one, two, three is the way to do it, folks. Okay, trust me, that's the way. I've done this for 10, 12 years. Never had any problems with anybody who, who does it my way properly. Again, one, go to first gear. Two, indicate your intention to move out. You can do mirrors if you want, but indicate to move out. Three, three mirrors good proper blind spot and then go but that's not all here's where people really lose the marks on on observation moving off their blind spot goes out of date so they've checked their blind spot and they turn around and they might just double check the gears and then they go it might not be much but that few seconds that you hesitated moving off there is going to cost you you have to do your blind spot literally just before you move off if you don't you're risking a mark on observation moving off just like you see here okay also you may need to complete you may need to 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 refresh it as i said and you might even need to do all three mirrors and blind spot again if it takes even longer to move off it all depends on how long it takes you to move off but two simple points there folks have a routine use use my one two three one gear stick two indicators three mirrors and blind spot uh be aware of the need to refresh it if needs be and whatever you do do not do a blind spot like this see that that's just a what I'm doing there now that, that's not a blind spot I'm looking to the side I'm li literally looking like three o'clock to the side that is not a blind spot and if I saw somebody doing that and I was a tester boom grade two mark straight away you have to make sure your your shoulder comes out like that and your your head goes right behind you and you you're looking out the back passenger window not not your own uh, window beside you, but the back passenger window. Okay, that's the one you need to look out the back of the back passenger window. Okay, it's so important. I, I see. I get a lot of um, I get a lot of this in emails. I I, I, I rarely see it on people who I do the test with and Wexford myself. Almost almost never to be honest with you. But I, I I I'm almost shocked at the amount of times I see it from emails. Like and again, four here. Like no need for it. Like you know, uh, one two three, refresh if needed. And make sure it's a proper blind spot, okay? All right, I think I've, I think I've laboured that point enough now. Let's move on into observation changing lanes. Another absolutely crucial point here. One of the most important things you'll do in your driving test is change lanes. It could be the most, I don't like to say dangerous, but it could be the most challenging thing you do because when you're changing lanes, you really are being tested. Then I mean, you're really being tested big time, especially if you're going from the right lane to the left lane, folks. Because I'm, I'm in my car. I'm sure it's the same in your car, but in my car, there's these. I have an Opel Corsa, which I love, but there's huge pillars. Pillars are like like the support beams for the roof. Like they're they're not windows, basically. You can't see through them. So the, the support pillars are a bit tricky and they're a bit wide in the Corsa. Not all not all cars have them that wide, but when you're going from right to left lane, it is a little bit trickier. That's why I'd always say to somebody, if you're going from the right lane to the left lane, just be that little bit extra cautious and try not to rush it. And don't be afraid to get a few extra mirror checks and just a little quick blind spot. And this is where the blind spot can be quick uh, when you're changing lanes, okay? When you're when you're overtaking or changing lanes, that you can get a quick little quick sideway glance to, to the left or just 
quick sideway glance to the right. You don't want to look behind you fully when you're um, changing lanes because you don't want to be taking your eyes off the road too long. So observation changing lanes is absolutely crucial here. You need to check the mirrors, indicate. Even if you can't get across straight away, still indicate because, you know, communication is key here. You have to let, let your fellow drivers know what you're doing. Um, and at least if, if you're already indicating, somebody might kind of hold back and let you go. But they can't do that if you're not going to tell them what you want to do. So indicate your intention to move across. Make sure whatever you do, do not forget, folks, do not forget this, what I'm about to say to you, okay? Do not forget this. Double check the mirrors as you're going across. Before you go across and as you're going across, especially the side mirror. So the left mirror if you're going to the left lane and the right mirror if you're going to the right lane. Keep the mirror checks quick and snappy. Don't stare in the mirrors too long. You know why this fella failed on grade three here for hazards. Keep the mirror checks quick, efficient, and I'm going to share with you a very important tip now, okay? I want you to listen very carefully to this, okay? I recommend a quick blind spot, like a quick sideway glance. If it's safe, maybe not all the time, maybe not all the time, not contradicting myself now, it does depend on the situation because if it's busy in front of you, but quiet behind, I probably wouldn't bother with the blind spot. But if it's the other way around, quiet in front of you, but uh, very busy behind you with cyclists and, and children and runners and whatever, then I would strongly recommend the blind spot. But here, I want you to listen very carefully to this, okay? If you're going to check your blind spot, folks, if you if you feel it's a suitable time to check the blind spot, make sure you don't do it straight after the mirror, okay? I recommend that you might, so you're going to the left lane, for example. So middle, middle mirror, left mirror, indicate. Middle and left mirror again a few times. Make sure you look straight out your front window to where your wipers are first, just, just so you have a, a, a good knowledge of what's in front of you that no child is crossing the road or no cyclist is, is cutting across you and then give a quick flick and then back so i think it's very important just to be aware of your front windscreen first just for a second or two before you check the blind spot because if you don't you're going to be taking your eyes off the road that extra millisecond half second too long because you're going straight from the middle mirror to the left mirror to the shoulder check and by the time you get back then and look straight ahead of you you don't want something nasty to happen okay Anyway, observation changing lanes, um, I presume it was down to a lack of mirror checks, possibly a lack of a blind spot, but I'd say he just didn't bother checking the mirrors enough going across changing lanes there. Now, it could be like in a dual carriageway situation, um, it could be in a filter lane, like you know when you go into a filter lane to the right or left, filter lane is like a, like, like a turning lane, you know, it's like, a, like, a, like if you have a protected right turn, um, it's kind of... It's kind of introduced by hatch markings and it's just an area where cars can rest in and wait while they're waiting for the oncoming cars to clear as they want to turn right. It could be that, it could be an urban dual car drive, who knows, but somewhere anyway I was changing lanes. Observation turning left, just the one mark here, it's not too bad, but it's usually down to not enough looks. So here's the big thing here about people turning left. I see this, see this myself sometimes actually. If people are turning left, okay, <clears throat> What I find them doing, uh, making a mistake, is looking to the right all the time. Like, like if, if you're turning left, yeah, you need to look to the right most of the time. This is like at a T-junction, like a stop sign, for example. Going from a minor road to a major road here, just so there's no confusion, okay? Yes, look to the right all the time, but don't, don't, don't just stare to the right. If you keep staring to the right, you're not aware of the parked car that's suddenly parked down the street. You're not aware of the pedestrian who's walking a little bit close to the path and maybe thinking of crossing the road. So if you're turning left, yes, look right like that most time, but just, you know, break it up with a few little looks to the other side as well. And that way you've got a better overall view of the road. So I would assume here that the person didn't have enough balance in terms of looks left and right. Could be to, the, could be to do with mirrors either. Maybe you didn't check the mirrors, but usually that's marked under mirrors, on, not under observation. But I some testers mark it under here for some reason, I don't know. Um, that's that. Excuse me. Hazards then next. So the grade three mark there is a straight fail. So if you get a grade three, a pink or a red mark there, it's a straight fail. No matter what else you do, you could drive perfect for the rest of the test. One red mark and you're a goner. But this poor chap got two as well, uh, unfortunately, which I'll explain now. But for those who missed the start, um, the red mark, the te he said, the tester said he was it was for looking in the mirrors too much on the roundabout and not being aware of what's in front of him. So you can see the heading there, react, anticipate. So it's probably more to do with not 
um, anticipating is kind of like what's in the future. So it's 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 the tester is probably saying there if if the guy's feedback is correct, if he, if he understood the tester correctly, that he was looking in the mirrors too much and not looking ahead on the roundabout. He specifically said. Uh, the other two then the two grade two marks there um, on hazards. Well, it could literally be for anything. Like sometimes the tester will will mark you on hazards if if it doesn't fit in anywhere else. Like like for example, too much check in the mirrors maybe. Um, but very often this will be like for not maybe not reading the road ahead you know like a maybe going too fast in a, in a tight street and, ha and having to brake suddenly maybe not slowing down or getting down the gears enough for the pedestrian crossing or the speed bump maybe not anticipating the roadworks um a person crossing the road it's just you see if if you focus more on the mirrors you're going to be kind of suffering because you're going to be very aware of what's behind you, 30, 40 meters behind you, but you're not going to be as aware of what's in front of you. Now, mirrors are all well and good at the right time, but they're not the be-all and end-all. You, if you're doing your driving test, whatever you do, do not try and put on some act and some kind of uh, silly performance for the tester that by checking your mirrors every four or five seconds, you're proving to the tester you're a great driver. If that was the case, if it was that easy, sure, you know, it wouldn't. Everyone would be doing it. A good driver needs to look ahead more than they look behind. It all depends on the situation. If you're changing lanes, if you're overtaking, if you're moving off, the mirrors are extremely important then because it involves a change of position. So you're either going from a bit of a left position to a right position, or vice versa. But on the road, if you're in driving in town, and I'd say ninety percent of your driving test is going to be in town. You need to be reading the road ahead. So you need to be saying to yourself, okay, I've got a bit of an uphill ahead there. might give it a bit of juice. I've got a bit of a right bend, so I'll try and keep left on the right bend. I've got a couple of parked cars up there, so I'll try and stay in a straight line instead of, instead of weaving. I've got a yellow box there. Don't stop in that. Pedestrian crossing, don't stop on that. Watch out for pedestrians. I've got a traffic light there. There's a bus stop sign ahead. Need to be aware of all these things. You know, So read the road ahead. Anticipate the road ahead. Don't get hung up on mirrors. Um, it's not as important as you think it is. Next, signals moving off. Three marks here on signals moving off. I mean, this fella lost three marks on signals moving off, four marks on observation moving off. Um, so his moving off was quite frankly disastrous. Like he, he, I, I just, I don't know. Like it, it, he obviously. He had he admitted himself he had no discipline moving off like one of the first things I, I ask someone to do if I meet someone for the first time in a driving lesson I, I off, will often see how they stop and move off the car because I can tell a lot then from their parking and from their moving off I can see if they're comfortable getting the bite I can see if they have a routine moving off but this fella lost four marks on observation moving off and three on signal so he wasn't indicating properly moving off just to answer that question deliberately there he was either forgetting to indicate moving off or maybe he indicated moving off but he, he let it go off early he just forgot he had no routine I, i'm guessing you know he admitted that to me in the email no routine so again if you follow my one two three rule you can help avoid this disaster happening to you one first gear two indicate that's signals indicate <clears throat> any marks on signals is to do with indicating usually so indicate to the right if you're parked on the left. And three, three mirrors and blind spot. But don't forget a proper blind spot and refresh it if the blind spot goes out of date. Okay. Um, sorry about that writing coming up on the screen there. If, if it's coming up there, folks. Um, if that's what I'm saying anyway. It's just a little setting thing I might have made a mistake on. So anyway, he wasn't indicating properly moving off. Last three marks in that, as we said. Progress is next then. Okay. So progress at roundabout. So anything to do with progress here, folks is the driver was driving too slow or he was too hesitant okay now there's only the one there's only the one um the one mark here on um progress that i can see here yeah so one so he was on, on one occasion he was a bit slow or a bit hesitant on the roundabout maybe he didn't go quick enough maybe he was on the roundabout but as as he was going around the the circle or whatever maybe taking the third exit to the right whatever he was actually driving too slow on the roundabout um, it's just the one. I wouldn't be too concerned about it. I, I don't think progress was a major issue for this fella. He only he only lost the one mark anyway. Um, but just a little too slow. I often one another 
one of the first things I do with someone is I, I always like to see how they are moving off, as I said to you. But because it's important to be able to get the bite if your car is a car that's, that has the bite with the old style handbrake, like mine does. And if you're comfortable getting the bite, then you're probably going not going to be at risk of suffering from progress. Because if you're comfortable getting the bite, you're used to moving off um, at short notice and quickly. Very often you need to kind of lift that clutch up a little bit quicker to help yourself move off quicker. Um, it involves getting the bite a little bit quicker because the car is not going to stall for the first two or three or four inches of your uplift off the clutch anyway. It's only when it gets close to the bite that it might be a bit uh, risky. But anyway, just the one mark there on progress there um, at the at the roundabout, so not, not, not a major thing there. And then we have vehicle controls here as well then. Um, so the vehicle controls... Um, I think I might have got rid of that right now. I hope so. Anyway. Sorry, here we are. Now, vehicle controls, folks. So this is to do with the clutch, as you can see. So it could be, it could be foot brake, it could be handbrake. But in this case, it's clutch, as you can see. Four marks. Now, if you get four marks on the one area, that means that you're going to fail on that anyway, okay? So he, he royally failed on this anyway because, as he said himself in his feedback, he was just using the clutch too much, okay? Again, I see this quite a lot in emails. I wouldn't see it too much on in my own with my own clients, but I do see it a lot in um in terms of the emails I get. And by the way, speaking of emails, my email address is there, folks, daintai at gmail.com. If you've any questions about driving, send me an email. I'll try to get back to you within the next day or two. If you'd like me to review your report sheet, uh just email me that as well. Email me a, a, a screenshot or a, a PNG JPEG attachment of the, of the um, driving test report sheet, but please let me give me some information about the test. Don't don't just email me your report sheet and then don't send anything else in the email. Let me know what the tester said to you. Like, let me know what you thought went wrong. Um, the more information I have, the better. Okay, so if I receive some information, I can learn and I can pass that information on then in the live streams. Okay, so don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Let me know what happened in the test. Let me know. Even if the tester said nothing to you, at least let me know that so I know that the tester said nothing to you. And perhaps you can give me your own thoughts then about, about the test. Anyway, the clutch. He was using the clutch too much. When you're stopping, folks, you should, like, if, if you're coming to a roundabout or a junction and you're in, say, second or third gear, I'd always recommend getting down to second gear anyway because it's good to kind of match the gears. The gears match the speed, like. Like, for example, I'm sure you'd agree, it makes a lot more sense to be driving at, say, 25 kilometers um, in second gear as opposed to driving at 25 kilometers in fourth or fifth gear because the car is less likely to struggle I mean to me that's a no-brainer uh, but you can stop in a higher gear all right there's, there's nothing wrong with it I just don't like it so he was probably putting the clutch in first before braking for long periods of time between gear changes he might go from fourth to third for example and then third to second but he wouldn't take off the clutch for each gear change so he would have the clutch stuck in as he goes from four to three, clutch still in, then three to two, clutch still in, and then he might show a bit of mercy then and let off the clutch. Whatever happened anyway, he was just using the clutch way, way too much, okay? If you overuse the clutch, you're going to lose marks, okay? It can be called coasting. It means that you're generating too much power on the car, which is great if you're going uphill and you're trying to change gears because that kind of power generation is what stops you slowing down too much or cutting out on the hill. But if you're coming down a hill or slowing down, coming to a roundabout or a stop sign, you don't want to be giving the car extra momentum and extra, you know, extra power because that's, that's the last thing you want. That could lead to overshooting the line. It could lead to sudden braking. And that's not good driving. That's not good planning ahead. So you generally, generally speaking, you should brake first and then go down the gears. So if you're going from fourth to third, come off the clutch slowly as you're braking because it, it makes it smoother. Uh, depends on the hill, of course. Not, I mean, all the roads are different. You have to, you know, adjust the braking to uh, suit the hill. And then three to two, off the clutch. And now if you're in second gear and you're driving in second gear for four or five seconds and you're coming to a stop sign, okay, so you brake first and then stick the clutch in about two, two and a half, three seconds before you stop. Usually brake first, then clutch. Alphabetical order, B before C. Because if you, ha if you clutch first and then brake, when you clutch first, the car might get a little, bit of a, a little bit of a power surge and that can be a slightly disconcerting feeling and the tester is more likely then to mark you on that. But it's probably going to be harder for you to stop. It might not feel as comfortable. 
could be you know could lead to harsh breaking so this guy got load of marks on that anyway so fours is a lot on, on clutch road markings next so traffic controls under that traffic controls is road marking so he must have went over some hatch lines maybe maybe he crossed the continuous white line maybe he stopped on a pedestrian crossing maybe he stopped on a yellow box or partially stopped on the yellow box somewhere anyway he didn't obey the road markings and he got caught out there by losing the mark yield right of way turning right so this is usually down to him misjudging um a right turn so the tester is basically saying that on a right turn he pulled out too soon and he possibly caused another car to slow down or take preventative action and as you can imagine if you lose a mark on yield right of way turning right or turning left whatever like that it's very much connected to observation You can already see up there that this chap lost um, eight marks up there, I think, on observation, moving off, changing lanes, and turning left, actually. So, very, very often, that's linked. Because if you're not observing properly the other traffic on the road, you're probably more likely to pull out in front of them and cause them to take preventative action, which is not really a good thing, okay? That's where grade threes can happen as well. But he got two here anyway on grade twos, grade two marks on yield right of way. So he, he clearly misjudged the other cars. He pulled out too soon on right turns and it cost him two marks. You see, right turns are a bit more trickier because when you're turning right, you're crossing two lanes, okay? That means you've got double the work to do. So you have to kind of do extra looks just to make sure because when you're turning left, you're only crossing the one lane. You only really have to worry about the, the cars on the right let's say if it's a t-junction but when you're turning right there is there is more work to do so it does require more 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 looks uh, you have to just make doubly sure that everything is okay and um, it's always good to be able to move off quickly and promptly without any undue delay because if, if you have trouble getting the bite or if you're a bit slow or sluggish moving off it kind of it can be linked as well to right of way um you know the slower you get across obviously the less desirable it is because you could could be kind of getting in the way of somebody else a very important point here as well is when it comes to right of way or observation turning left right please please bear this in mind folks this is very important maybe, maybe i don't mention this enough but you have to be aware of the hills okay the hills so for example this guy lost the mark on right of way turning right so may, maybe he was turning right kind of up a hill which maybe meant he moved off a bit slower so he probably needed a higher clutch and a bit more juice Maybe the other cars were coming down a hill, which means that they're more likely to pick up momentum and pick up speed. So if, you, if you're misjudging the hills, it could lead to a mark on yield right of way, turning left or turning right. So I, I, I think it's very important to be aware of that as well, folks. It's, it's always good to be able to move off quickly. And it's just as important, if not more important, to be able to be aware of the hills that both you're on or you're facing and that the other cars are facing. I have a, you know, I have one or two drivers at the moment, and I'm all. I often ask them, so what, what, what do you see ahead of you? I'm constantly saying, what do you see ahead of you? And I don't, and if they don't say, I, I'd often say, well, what, what, what about the hill? And then they might say, oh yeah, it's kind of downhill. So I say, okay, so it's downhill. So you probably maybe might think of coming over and covering the brake a little bit with your heel on the ground, for for the downhill. And then just before the downhill ends, then as it becomes uphill, you then kind of, uh, you know, bring your right foot over to the accelerator and begin to generate some power at the bottom of the hill so you're so you can help keep your speed consistent and efficient okay so tri please try be aware of the hills because it can uh it can do you good it can help you plan ahead better um finally then turnabout so a mark each here on turnabout competency and observation so the tester is saying that he didn't do the turnabout in a competent efficient way uh, he maybe lacked smoothness, lacked fluidity, and he clearly wasn't looking around anyway. I mean, I'm not surprised there. We can already see a load of marks and observation up there. For example, there's four on moving off. I mean, you would you would have failed on moving off alone anyway. So I'm not surprised that he lost the mark on observation on the turnabout. It's very, very important on the turnabout that you give a good full look around before you before you do anything. So I'd often say to somebody, like, do... do um, I mean, I already mentioned the one, two, three, for example. I'd say to somebody, do a zero, one, two, three. So a zero is like this. A zero is a full look around. A zero. Full 360 degree look, but before the reverse and the turnabout. 
and then go into your one, two, three for the turnabout. So one, two indicators, three mirrors, blind spot, and then go off, move off at the safe then. So the tester's saying he didn't observe properly either before moving off on the turnabout or when you stop. So when, when you stop on the turnabout, whenever you stop on the turnabout, the most important thing you do is look all around you. I mean, you have to go into gear and make sure you don't roll, all that kind of stuff, but the observation is crucial. Make sure you look all around you. Now, on the turnabout, don't just do this. That's not enough. That's not enough. You have to give a good full look around all the windows of the car. Make sure you catch a glimpse of every single piece of glass in your car. And if you do that, including the mirrors if you want, but if you get if you get a glimpse of every piece of glass in the car, you, you should be fine on the turnabout um, in terms of observation. But that's not all. On the reverse part of the turnabout, you have to be looking behind as well and kind of like 360. So I would say to somebody, when you're reversing, do the five point check. That means there's five places you need to look when you're um, reversing. The two shoulders and the three mirrors. So you might start with the left shoulder and you might kind of get down to the three mirrors and you might get the right shoulder towards the end of your reverse, which corresponds to you getting close to the right curb anyway, so it kind of suits that anyway. So don't forget that. And another thing on observation on the turnabout as well, folks, just, just at the end of the turnabout, what I find a lot of people do at the end of the turnabout in practice ones with me, and I, and I do see this a lot with, with my uh, learners as well when they're at the end of the turnabout they kind of say oh yes I'm, I'm nearly finished now I just have one more they're probably thinking to themselves oh I want just one more bit of a turn to go now and I'm finished turnabout so what they often do is they forget to look left they forget to they're kind of looking looking right as in where because they're going right they're going to the right to finish the turnabout and then park on the left and I don't know if it's because the tester is sitting in the passenger seat or whatever but very often they, they, they forget to look left as I said Whenever you stop on the turnabout, you need to give a full look all around you. Um, get all, all the glasses in the, in the car, all the, the, the windows, I mean. And you should be fine. And I just noticed at the end, like maybe, as I said, maybe it's because the tester is there, they don't, they don't want to risk making eye contact. I'm not really sure. Um, maybe it could be a nervous thing or something. But very often, the, the candidates, just at the very end, they just kind of neglect the observation at the end there, okay? So that's observation on the turnabout there. You have to do it at the start. Look all around, look all around. And if you stop, look back reversing over both shoulders and don't forget to observe uh, full 360 on your last leg as well. Competency on the turnabout finally, folks. So that's again down to smoothness, down to fluidity. Maybe he didn't steer quick enough. Um, I think he said he stalled, didn't he? Yeah, he said he, said he stalled on, on this, I think. Um, so if you stall or if you get, if it's a bit, you know, if you're a bit hasty or jumpy with the clutch or if you break a bit suddenly or if you look like you're getting a bit flustered it's going to probably get, get yourself marked on, on competency then uh, so I basically didn't do it with enough confidence and it comes back to clutch control as well if you are confident and comfortable with clutch control that means then you're probably going to do a good turnabout and reverse because clutch control lays the foundations for a good turnabout okay so clutch control is just when you're when you're just giving little gentle movements up and down, up and down in order to move the car. So you're moving the car with the clutch more so than the revs, okay? I should have a link in the description there for my video on clutch control if you want to check that out. If you have good clutch control, it sets a great baseline for a good turnabout, folks, okay? Because that means then you can steer quicker and get it done with more confidence. It means that you can observe better because if you're going nice and slow and smooth, you have plenty of time then to check all around your reversing, for example. And it just kind of is going to make the car feel smoother and more controlled if you are if you have good clutch control um, as you're doing your turnabout or, or even reverse, okay? So the, on the turnabout anyway, just, it just needs more practice. It just, it just wasn't quite up to it on the turnabout. It wasn't looking around enough and just didn't do it in a smooth enough way, okay? So that's basically a rundown of that test sheet there. This fella clearly wasn't ready for the test. Um, originally from the Middle East, not it's it's a it's like night and day driving where in his home place compared to compared to driving here so he wasn't prepared for the change in circumstances um bit of a wake-up call um a full license in the middle east or america canada is worth nothing in ireland okay on the roads with the type of roads we have here the manual transmission cars the, the road signs road markings no like night and day it's a different different world folks different world altogether Okay then, so I hope you found that useful. I hope that will clear up some things for you. Going to get some comments now. I'm going to answer as many questions as I can for you here. 
Uh, let's get back to the comments here then. So I think Wojciech was the last who got all those signs right. Anybody else who wants to let me know what the signs mean, comment um, in the section. Uh, Kizmina Cherkowska, I think. Sounds Polish. Hello, I've been watching your videos for a while now. I have my test tomorrow. Any tips? Any tips? Yes. Uh, don't drive too slow. Practice clutch control. Look behind on the reverse. I could list you 100 tips, but it all depends on yourself and your own levels of driving. Email me there if you want, and I will uh, I could send you an email over the next day or two if I get if I get a chance. But uh, practice makes perfect. But the best of luck to you in your test. Liam T. Hi, Dan. Thanks for replying to my email yesterday. My pleasure, Liam. Took your advice on board this morning and already so much better. That's great, great news, Liam. That's great to hear. And the best of luck to you with the driving. Just send me another email if you need clarification on anything. But... That sounds good. Lauren O'Neill, uh, hang on, no, I just lost I, I just, my comments. I just refreshed there, folks. So just give me a chance to find there now. Um, let me see. Uh, okay, there's Liam's comment. And Lauren O'Neill, here we are then. Yeah, I have a good few comments to get through here, but I'll try and get them all done now before I sign off. Uh, Lauren O'Neill just brought my first car, ready to get all the practice in and get my test. Best of luck to you, Lauren. I uh, hope you go well in the new car. Email me if you have any questions. Alan Marshall says hello. I think I emailed Alan Marshall recently, I think. If it's the same Alan Marshall. I get a lot of emails, folks, so I, I, sometimes I don't remember everybody. But hello to you, Alan. Gillian McGrath, that book is fantastic. Great. I've left a link in the description for a wonderful book. I'm actually hoping to write my own book someday soon, folks. It's on my long list of to-do things, but... While I eventually get round to finding my inner author in me, I want to recommend uh, the book Get It by Brian O'Leary. Get it. So you should get it. The link is in the description. Great book. Easy to read. Nice, simple little tin paperback book. Has the signs, road markings, lots of great tips. Uh, I'd strongly recommend it, okay? Um, Katie M, I think here, yeah. Hi, Dan. I've been practicing for my test, and in my town, there's a sharp turn on the main street. When I try to take the turn in second gear, I slow down too much and the car starts chugging. Yes, you need to go to first gear then, KTM. So I was wondering, would I lose marks if I took a sharp turn in? For absolutely not. Unless there's some mistake that you make while you're doing it, like unless you come off the clutch too quick, unless you brake suddenly or something like that, absolutely not. That'll be fine. What you need to do there is just, just before you start turning, so about a second or two before the turn gets sharp, you need to kind of roll into first gear then. So put the clutch in, uh, bring into first gear, and come really slowly off the clutch, go into clutch control, and do it there. I have a great video on that. Um, it might be in the description to this. I, I'm not sure if it isn't, to be, to be honest now. But it's, uh, uh, what did, uh, hang on, what did I call it? Um, tricky junctions, I think is, I call it. Um, but I specifically show you about that first. Email me if you if you want, Katie. Email me, uh, daintai at gmail.com, and, and just say what you said there and I, I can forward you the link but it's 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 a it's a video i made in the last six or seven in the last eight or nine months anyway on tricky more difficult junctions and how it is absolutely fine to go into first gear 100 percent nathaniel tie well i'll tell you one thing if there's another tie out there we must be long lost cousins or something especially spelled uh t-y-g-h-e nathaniel tie uh, we could be cousins, yeah. Hello, fellow Thai long lost. We could well be because the, the name Thai is so rare. So, hello to you, Nathaniel. I think I see another comment from you further down. I'll get to you now. Max Kane, hey there, Dan. Passed my theory test last week, and your videos helped so much. Thanks, for You're very welcome. I, I do think the videos more help the practical side of things, but I have made a few good, a good few theory videos as well. So, that's great news, Max. Congrats on passing the theory test. So, you're already one step of the way there. Uh, so, well done to you. I'm glad. Glad they could help you. Um, Sir Cervanti Thota, thank you for your excellent videos. I passed theory test and applied for learner permit. Could you please suggest who I can contact for EDT driving lessons in Dublin 2? Dublin 2, is that north side? That's south side, isn't it? Um, I would recommend that you try in gear driving school, okay? In gear, I N G E A R, in gear. If they don't do Dublin 2, they will recommend somebody that does, okay? So Paul Murphy, in-gear driving school there, Svervanti. Uh, if you Google that, you'll find it. And well done on your theory test. And a very, very best luck to you in your driving. Nathaniel, my long-lost cousin, has a fear of driving. And I am comfortable just living my life without it and using public travel. How can I get my family to respect that? Well, I... I 
you're kind of asking a question there that is probably more of a question for a psychologist, Nathaniel. But I would say to you, do what feels right for you. Okay, not driving is not for everybody. But I I have found over the years that a lot of people say that, but then it kind of comes back to bite them in the backside later on. Like I I had a friend who lived in London for many many years, never drove a day in his life. And when he eventually moved back to Wexford, then he had to learn to drive at a slightly older age. Like he was a bit hard. He was a bit harder now than your average seventeen-year-old. Let's say, but if that works for you, that's what you should do. You have to do what makes yourself happy. And best wishes to you, Nathaniel. Daniel G. Hi, Tig. Okay. Uh, any tips to boost the confidence short term? Um, have a test on the seventh. Any small things I can do as well would be appreciated. Yeah, well, I have a video on driving test nerves, and I've, I can send you a link on uh, a few good videos I have on building your confidence. But, you know, you, 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 what I'd say to you there, Daniel, is, first of all, just take it one step at a time. You know, you, you're not going to be the perfect driver in a few lessons or a few journeys. And always remember as well, the driving tester is not looking for the perfect driver. The driving tester is looking for a competent driver, uh, a capable driver uh, you are allowed to make mistakes um, what I would say to you is take it sh take it slow slow and steady uh, get lessons from a reputable professional instructor and try and practice as much as you can and don't be afraid to practice in car parks as well where you can get used to the clutch control the brakes and the steering and all that kind of stuff but if you want to email me I will get back to you on that as well Daniel G Sean um, is next in regards to the duration of the driving test. Is it, st is it still reduced? No, I, I'm not aware of it being reduced at all, Sean. I, any tests I've had over the last number of months have been pretty much the same as previous. Maybe subconsciously some testers are, are, are getting it done quicker, but any tests I've had, they're all around about 35, 40 minutes long. Um, and I'd be in touch with instructors in various groups, various like Facebook, WhatsApp groups, whatever. And none, none, none of them have ever said that it's a... Uh, that is reduced so no still more or less the same length give or take uh lucas farius next he asks then would you recommend to apply the handbrake when stopping at the traffic lights and at the junction it's a very common question good question very common question and as the answer to everything it depends on the situation so if you're stopping for like a second or two and you're only on a very slight downhill i probably wouldn't bother using the handbrake but if you're at traffic lights and you're stopped for ages and it's on a big steep hill well then i would use the handbrake it all depends on the situation so i often say halt as a good way to kind of narrow it down h-a-l-t halt so use the handbrake on the hill that's h a is a lighting or parking so a lighting is like setting down or you know just just stopping uh temporarily to let somebody out let's say um l is lights and t is time so at traffic lights and if you're stopped over five seconds so there are the four main areas that you should use the handbrake if you're stopped on a hill if you're alighting or parking at lights and if you're stopped over four or five seconds you have to make that call all junctions are different there's no one size fits all like just general rule that you can apply you have to base each aspect of your driving has to be based on you know, on the, on the individual road ahead of you, on the individual junction that you're in. Um, Noctis3212, your videos are of great help. I had trouble doing a three-point turn until I came across your videos. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, Nox. Glad to, he glad to hear you found them useful. Um, it's always good. I mean, YouTube is a great learning resource. I use it for other things as well about if I'm looking for instructions on how to do something or do uh, find out something about software or something like that. So YouTube is a really, really great learning resource. It's, it's certainly changed. It's certainly changed my world anyway. But glad to be able to help there, Noctis, and I'm sure others have, have found them useful as well. So thanks for that comment. Uh, Cramliff, hi, hello to you too. Christina, hey, Christina M, sorry, hi. Do you know if the questions to appear on the theory test are listed within the theory app? I believe they are, yeah. I haven't really used that app very much now. I know the RSA recommended for practice. I also recommend the CD-ROM as well. And there's a good website, um, mocktheorytest.ie as well, uh, run by Kevin Horgan of Ladybird Driving School, if you want to check that out, uh, mocktheorytest.ie. Um, I'm not 100% sure. I, I, I presume that the questions on the app are as valid as the questions in the test. There, there is about six or 700 of them, like, so there, you know, there's, there's a lot of questions there. 
John Carwin, that's a name familiar. John is a gentleman from um, Cork who is another instructor, I believe. John, hi, Dane. Good to be with you this evening. Keep up, keep up the great work. John, thank you very much. John's a good supporter of mine. He regularly shares things. And if you're looking for instruction or if you're looking for driving lessons down around the, the Mallow area, I think John's in Mallow in West Cork, Northwest or West Cork, uh, give him a shout. Um, I think it's Dr. Bob School of Motoring. What a, a great name for a, for a, a driving instructor. So if it's the same John Carwin, I'm pretty sure it is the same John Carwin. John, thanks for being here and thanks for all the support. You're a gentleman. Casper McCabe. Hi, Dane. I have a test tomorrow. These videos are great. Well, just why they call me the great Dane, isn't it? Best of luck to you, Casper. Always reminds me of that ghost. I used to love that uh, Casper the Friendly Ghost when I was younger. Um, so best of luck to you, Casper. Um, do your best. If you have any questions, give me a shout. Uh, email is there. I'll try and get back to you by tomorrow if I can. Uh, and let me know how you get on. Natalia Nemton, thank you very much. Very, videos are very helpful. You're very welcome, Natalia, and good luck to you with your driving if you haven't passed or if you're if you're learning. Best wishes to you. Maple Leaf, I think the rule is keep your body in the center of the road while driving. Um, your body, your car, I think. Yeah, well, generally keep it between the ditches anyway, and you won't go far wrong. But it does depend on the width of the road. So. You know you can't it, when you're talking about position okay and it's a area that is a common area of of failure of losing marks your position will entirely depend on the width of the lane okay so if i have a narrow country road ahead of me i'm going to drive more or less in the middle of the lane in the center of the lane more or less anyway if i have a big wide national road like a big you know like the main like a main road between two big cities i'm going to keep very i'm going to drive very close to the left i'm going to have my left wheels basically almost straddling not maybe not quite straddling now but almost straddling the left hard shoulder okay so there's going to be a big gap between um, myself and the oncoming cars that are that are coming okay a big gap in the middle but that's because it's a wide lane so there are kind of two extremes and very often the truth lies somewhere in between those but it all depends on the road so narrow lanes keep central wider lanes maybe you could keep left then depending on the bend depending on the situation um Jibben Jose, I think. What does the lined area towards the inside in the roundabout mean? The lined area? Um I'm not sure about the line. I'm not sure what you mean there. There's probably a solid white line, which means don't cross, I think. Uh sometimes roundabouts have a line like hatch lines, which means you're not to go into the dome, into the center circle. Um what else would you be saying? I'm not sure. Other than that, I'm not quite sure what you mean. If you want to send me a photo or something, or I, I could answer that. But I'm not a hundred percent sure. Jib, jib, jibbin, Jose. Sean just got the book that I recommend there. Hopefully, it'll help. I'm sure it will. Oh, that's great, Sean. Thank you because you'll be giving me a little bit of help there about that affiliate link. So I appreciate that. Uh, Sean is talking about the book Get It by Brian O'Leary. A great book on learning to drive and how helping you to pass the test for all levels. Like what, whether you're learning, whether you're kind of in you know in, in intermediate level driver, or whether you're about to do your test, it's, it's a really really great book. I couldn't recommend it highly enough. So link in the description, folks, if you want to check it out. Um, an Amazon link. Uh, let's see, let's see. Maple Leaf, please make your picture big. Yeah, I was thinking of that. You know, I, I was thinking there when I came on there today. I think that that's this um picture is a bit small but then again I, i'm thinking like you don't want to see my face so i'm trying to get more information here like the 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 viewer count the signs the um driving test report sheet and the links i'll try and make it a bit bigger next week next time maybe but i'm just trying to get more information on there as well i forgot to mention the paypal actually folks yeah which is the most important thing if you do want to support me by paypal um let again the link will be in the description any amount i'll i'll gladly take any amount of money you have some people are very very generous whether it's 250 5 euro 10 20 30 40 100 200 or more i would be very very grateful uh completely voluntary donations like so i'm going to make these videos i'm going to keep them obviously i'm going to keep them freely available for you to help you and to help the people coming after you um the paypal is just a, if you want to show your appreciation uh, by making a completely voluntary donation you can do so but i'm going to answer your email i'm going to answer your comments here i'm going to make free videos for you regardless of whether you contribute or not anyway okay so it's completely up to you but thank you in advance for any support i really do appreciate it folks uh genuinely 
Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, Aaron Lee then, I think, is next. Any tips on keeping the mirrors clean during heavy rain? Couldn't see anything today during the sudden downpour. Yeah, that's a tricky one, Aaron. You could stop and have a like a, a tea towel or some kind of a rag handy if it's if it's getting to you. But I, I find in my experience, usually the rain water will kind of clear off the window gradually as you're driving along. So as you're driving at say twenty or thirty or forty kilometers an hour, the the kind of the, the turbulence, the wind that you're generating at that speed usually helps clear the, the windows uh the side mirrors um clear. Um, it's not what you're talking about, the mirrors. The mirrors, yeah, that's what you're talking about, the mirrors. Um, and remember as well, you don't have to have a completely clear view of the mirrors. Like, I mean, obviously it's 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 better to have a clear view of the mirrors. It makes, makes more sense to be able to see clearly. But as long as you can see mostly in the mirrors, that's that's the important thing. Like, if, if there's a car coming, if you're trying to change lanes to the right or left and you think there's a car, there's a car coming up in the other lane, a few raindrops is not going to block your view of the car I'd imagine I mean you should still be able to see the car coming there maybe the cyclist maybe not but you know it, it, they, they should clear off anyway after driving um, if you check out there, there might be some some product on the market that you can get maybe to keep your your um, mirrors clear because I know there's something some people who wear face masks or glasses fog up there's a there is a there is a product I think there's a spray you can get in the pharmacy that helps to spec or somewhere like that that helps prevent your face mask from causing your glasses to fog up uh, I'm sure there could be something to do with for the mirrors as well. I'm just not sure about it. Okay, folks, I'm going to try and get the comments finished up here, folks. And I'll be kind of getting on the home straight here now. Let's see. Um, Asa, I think, when moving off from the traffic lights or stop sign, do you check the left and right mirror checks will be enough? Yeah, if you're moving off from traffic lights, I usually would recommend that you keep an eye on the mirrors as you're moving off. Uh, I wouldn't be too bothered about doing it at a stop sign though because when you're at a stop sign you have to understand that the most important thing at a stop sign is that you stop first of all you know be in a good position left or right and that you're looking left and right on the main road that's the important thing at a stop sign and um, if you start getting into the habit of doing loads of mirror checks at a stop sign while you're waiting to go you're you're basically watching things that are 25 30 40 meters behind you which is mostly irrelevant if you're concerned that there's a cyclist about to do something stupid because sometimes cyclists wouldn't be the brightest sparks on the old bonfire, then yeah, keep an eye all right. But remember, at a stop sign, you should be focusing on the main road, not what's 30 metres behind you. Uh, but it's certainly good to do it at traffic. Just check, give a quick check of the left and right side mirror as you're moving off at traffic lights, just in case there's any cyclists around like that, especially if there's cycle lanes nearby. And if there's good weather as well, you might be more likely to get cyclists out on the road. Aoife Shanahan. Uh, do they still ask you to do an emergency stop in your test? Not in Ireland anyway, Aoife. Maybe in the UK they do that, yeah, but not not here. Uh, it's a good thing. I, I mean, I, I think it should be here, but it's not not at the moment, no. Um, if you're doing an if you're an instructor doing it, you will be asked, all right, but not not if you're a regular driver. Cameron McCabe, when going straight in a single lane roundabout, should you stay on the left side of the roundabout? Yes, Cameron McCabe, you should stay on the left lane or slightly on the left side. Depends how wide the roundabout is. It comes back to you know judging the road on, on, on its width. Generally, if you're going straight, keep left unless the signs or road markings say otherwise, okay? Abdullah K. Hayden, I'm starting my first EDT lesson tomorrow. Is there anything I should do to prepare um well just make sure you have all your your permit the only thing you really need is your is your learner permit i have a video on how to move off like it shows you the basics of moving off i also have a video on the cockpit drill so if you type in dane Thai cockpit drill where i i go through everything that you should do in the first lesson like make sure your seat is comfortable going through the cars controls all that kind of stuff so it, it would certainly be helpful if you're aware of the cockpit drill if you're aware of the car's controls, like the indicators, the lights, the wipers, the, the terminology around dipped headlights, full headlights, fog lights, all that kind of stuff. But to be honest, um, your instructor will go through all that with you anyway, I'm sure, tomorrow. And the best of luck to you, Abdullah, in your journey on your first EDT lesson. So I hope it goes well for you. Maple Leaf, unfortunately, seems that seems this fellow fellows instructor hasn't taught him abc of driving in ireland yeah it's just it's kind of tricky you know he's he he seemed to be not very prepared for this test this chap god love me yeah. uh so thanks for that maple leaf casper mccabe is it okay to stick your head out the window to check your blind spots not really casper i don't see why you'd need to do that um just just 
check within your car like you know you don't want to be like a you don't want to be like a dog on a summer's day like with it stuck in your head out the window just just check like you know there and out, out the back passenger window should be fine um i mean if you do stick your head out the window i i i mean i can't imagine it'll be a major problem i just i don't i, I just don't think it's necessary you know I, and i suppose it'll depend on the tester but uh you know just yeah you know i wouldn't overcomplicate things MG, then love your classes. What's the principle for positioning the car at roundabouts when going straight where there are no road markings? Do I choose the left or right lane? Well, if there's no road markings, you're better off choosing the left lane then. It'll be safer, especially if the roundabout is straight, like the junction you're going is at 12 o'clock. So definitely I would recommend that. Um, again, it depends on the width of the lane. If it's only a single lane roundabout, you might want to stay central, maybe a little bit left of central if it's, a bit, if it's a bit wider. But if in doubt, I would keep left there, yeah. Aaron Gillespie, high end failed driving test three weeks ago, only had four grade two marks, but, but got a grade three, so failed. I was turning right at a junction and the lights went red uh, when I was behind the line. Um, didn't see the green filter light. I went on for about 10 seconds and, and she failed me for not progressing. Hope to get it on second, on my second goal, which is Tuesday. Uh, thanks for the videos. Um, I stopped behind the first, I stopped behind the line and didn't make the right turn. I wasn't stopped in the middle of the junction. Yeah, that can happen. You know, you're, you're, you're a bit unfortunate there because it looks like he would have passed on you for that, which is, which is unfortunate. So it shows you're a good driver. You're a capable driver, but for whatever reason, at that set of lights, you were probably zoned in on the one thing too much and you weren't kind of you weren't judging the situation in its entirety so may maybe you were too focused on the um on the cars in front of you and maybe too focused on your position and you weren't aware of the lights there because you have to be very aware because sometimes you'll have that arrow light that will come on and especially if, if the lights have that space for the arrow light like some some lights will just have like you know one two room for three lights it'll be just basically skinny up and down like that it'll only have room for three lights so it'll, it'll, you'll only have the circular light but if you have a bigger set of lights busier set of lights you may have that extra extension on the lights that make room for the filter arrow so yeah it's unfortunate but it just goes to show how important it is not to be focused on the one thing too much because if you focus or zone on the one thing too much it could be to your cost as you found out there aren't so sorry to hear that but it does seem like you're a fairly uh, capable driver so i'd be reasonably confident you'll get it next time if you drive in a similar way but just all you can do is learn from that mistake uh, best of luck next time though kai murphy are there more passes because of covid no i don't think so if there's more passes it's because people are preparing better or they're, they're getting their lessons uh, i'm not aware of any um you know extra passes for covid no Phil Hall, can you fail your test if you don't nail the reversing around the corner? Well, you can fail your test, yeah, on the reverse, but you'd want to do something fairly bad for it, like like if you mounted the curb or if you didn't see a car behind you and you got a bit close to it or something like that. But if you just make a normal mistake on the reverse, it shouldn't it shouldn't cost you dearly, Phil. You know, um, it, it depends on the on how how bad it is though. Your advice is greatly appreciated. Tooly Tool says I enjoy watching your videos; they're very informative. Glad to hear that, Tooly Tools, great name. Um, I'm delighted to hear that. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your comment. Uh, Christine Martinez, any tips when approaching roundabouts? Yeah, slow down early and gradually because that's going to give you time to get the work done. Also, watch out for your signs and road markings because they can tell you a lot about what to do. Also on roundabouts, very often, as I said earlier in the stream, you're going to have a little, little kind of curve to the left. So just before the stop line at the roundabout, you'll have that little curve where, where the curb on your left just curves a little bit to, to the left. So try and go with that curve. That might mean turning your wheel a little bit kind of to the left. So that can help your position on the roundabout as well. But I've loads of videos there, Christine, on roundabouts. Uh, if you want to check those out, I, I go through position on roundabouts there and that. Aaron Gillespie again. Uh, Carolina, why would you hold on to brake if the handbrake is up? Is it okay to keep the clutch down? Did I miss a comment there from Carolina? There's a message retracted there, so uh, I think it's, maybe it's that one. Uh, Ravi, Ravi Kieran, Ravi Kieran, sorry. Uh, turnabout and roundabout are are they the same thing? No, a turnabout is a, like a three point turn. So where you're par a turnabout is like parked on the left, and you have to go like forward, reverse, and forward again in three if you can, or take the extra turn if it's a narrow road. Doesn't matter. 
Um, and a roundabout is like the circular things in the middle of the road at, at a junction. So no, they're not the same. They're not the same thing. They're very, very different, Ravi. Jordan, coffee. I have my test tomorrow morning. How much should I check my mirrors? Depends what you're doing, Jordan. Uh, I, as I said, I can't be giving you simple one one line answers. You should check your mirrors more if you're overtaking or changing lanes or maybe moving off. You should check your mirrors less if you're kind of at a situation where there's lots of stuff in front of you. So it, it, like if there's a load of parked cars and a load of pedestrians in front of you, you know, you don't really want to be checking your mirrors too much unless you're particularly concerned about something. So it all depends on the road. Each road is different. Judge each road individually, okay? But definitely if you're changing lanes or um, overtaking, that I mean, definitely check the mirror, double check the mirrors then. So a few comments here on the signs. Number one, no entry. That's right, number one, no entry. This is from Pinay Nars Travels. I think uh, Pinay Nars Travels, I'm saying that right. Number one, no entry. Number two, cul-de-sac, correct. Number three, dangerous bends. Yeah, plural bends, yeah. Uh, Maple Leaf, thanks for answering me. Amy. You're very welcome, Maple Leaf. Glad to help you. Um, Pinny again says, four minute work. Yeah, road works ahead. Certainly five, no entry, absolutely. Uh, number six then road narrows from both sides great and uh, number seven is a pedestrian street yes and uh, number eight go left turn left that's right so that's great there and number nine is a the hospital there so penny narrows travels got to give a good uh, description of the signs there so well done to you ravi kiran i think 30 seconds once you once you back your mirror jordan okay i'm not quite sure what that is um number nine hospital yes that's right that's right katie m says great thanks you're very welcome katie i'm not sure if you're talking to me now or if i answered a comment but thanks for tuning in anyway katie kira tracy hi then when i go down the gears i notice when i lift the clutch up it starts to chug any tips yes i certainly do now there's two things here kira tracy two things here is going to help you okay and i guarantee you these these will help you okay Number one, try not to go down the gears too early, okay? If you go down the gears too early, the car hasn't slowed down to, say, third gear or second gear speed. So you're trying to change gears when the car hasn't slowed down. The other thing, keep on the brake a bit more. So even as you're, even as you're changing gears, uh, just stay on the brake a little bit, okay? Just, just slight braking as you're changing gears. And number three, come off the clutch much slower, okay? much slower off the clutch if you do those three things you will notice a smoother gear change okay so best wishes to you kira shane higgins hi then i was just wondering is it okay to prepare oil on traffic lights on a hill um or do you lose marks for acceleration uh let me see what what uh, I'm wondering is it okay to prepare while on traffic lights on a hill oh yeah maybe maybe get the red ready yeah you can but i wouldn't do it too long though because if, if you do it for too long it could you could lose marks on acceleration a good driver should be able to get the get the acceleration you know on demand reasonably quick so i would i would not recommend that you're accelerating for long periods of time before the light goes green no because you may well lose marks on acceleration there that, again it may depend on the tester but you know i wouldn't be recommending it cj driver if you pause the clutch if you pause the clutch for the amount for the count of one at the bite as the clutch comes up you will get it smooth you will get a smooth transition through the gears yeah there's good advice there i think so i pause the clutch for the count of one at the bite as the clutch comes up you will get a smooth transit yeah <clears throat> so it's all about kind of lifting that clutch in a smooth way so as not to be kind of jerking or jumping the car uh pretty annie george do we need to put the handbrake on at roundabouts if there is a traffic queue? yes sometimes you do but again it all depends on the hill it depends on how quick the traffic is moving if you're like at a roundabout if you find yourself stopped on an uphill or you find yourself stopped over four or five seconds i'd be inclined to use the handbrake yeah um but if you're only stopped very 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 briefly on a slight downhill or flat you may not need it okay it all depends on the hill Carolina then will the maneuvers be tested on the main roads my instructor always brought me to estates practically usually they're in estates yeah like like usually they're in housing estates or industrial estates or something like that they're, they're not going to go on main roads um like as in a national road but it could it could still be busy it, it all depends on the tester but usually they'll, they'll be in town somewhere like some kind of a housing estate or maybe a main road in town if that makes sense but um it's usually in town though anyway usually housing estates yeah 
Marco, hi Dan, your videos are very useful. We have in Ireland any place similar for, to track for race without transit to be used only for driver learning practices or the practices here only in the street? Um, I think only most of the time they're, they're, the driving lessons take place on the road, but I think there's um I think there's a place in Kildare where you can learn to drive off the road. Um, what's the name of the place again? Um, I don't know. I can't think of it. There's a there's a place in Kildare that 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 will teach you how to drive, but kind of off the road. But if you if you Google that, you might find it. Um, Marco, and good luck to you if if you're looking for that. Good luck to you. But I sorry, I can't I can't remember the name of that that driving company that, that does that. Um, Asa already sent in. Thanks for that. Great. I think that's an email. Yeah. So I will get back to you in the next few days if I can. Learn to drive, Travis. Oh, just this is J um James Travis from uh, Milton Keynes in London, actually a, a a friend of mine who's a driving instructor over there, and he also has a great channel, folks. So, uh, great to see you, uh, there, James. Um, thanks for tuning in, and James has great advice as always. So, folks, if you want to check out uh James's page, hang on, I know. If you just type in uh Learn to Drive Travis or Travis Driving School. You will see another uh, great uh, YouTube uh, learning to drive channel. So check out his his page and lots of great videos there as well on his page. So thanks thanks very much for tuning in, James. Good to see you. Um, uh, Srav Sravanti Salta, I think. Thanks a million then for recommending the in gear driving school. Paul Murphy. I will contact him. Dublin Two is near Grand Canal Dock. Yeah, Grand Canal Dock. Grand. Yeah, I, I I was I was thinking that I, he he mostly covers the north side. You see, but. If he can't help you out, I, I can promise you he'll, he'll point you in the direction of someone who will, okay? And the best luck to you with that then, Sir, uh, Sir Avanti, if I'm saying your name correctly. Um, Yazia Levincia, would you have to always stop at the roundabout even if it is clear? No, no. If it's only yield, you just have to give way. Uh, if it's safe to go, go. The whole idea of roundabouts is to keep traffic moving. So don't stop and don't delay traffic unless, unless it's busy or unless you have to. If it's safe to go, then you should go. Verenda Singh uh, says, in a cross junction, single area, single lane road, if the car ahead to me is turning right and I'm going straight ahead, should we then go straight before him or wait to for him to turn right first? If you're going straight, you should go first because you're doing less work. Okay, If, if he's turning right, he would usually have to wait for you uh, unless he's already started his turn and then you should give way to him if he's already in the middle of his turn, if he's already started his turn. But if you're going straight and he's turning right across you, um, you should go first because you're considered to be doing less work. I mean, you're both crossing two lanes, but he's doing more work in terms of turning the wheel and ending up on a main road, okay? If you'd, I have a video on crossroads, actually. So if you check out my video on uh, right-of-way crossroads, you'll, you'll, you'll see me explain that, okay? Okay, folks, I'm going to try and get the last few comments here now done, folks. I'll have a quick summary then before we finish up. Um, any tips on dealing with three lanes on a roundabout? Yeah, take your time on the approach. Watch your signs, watch your road markings. And don't forget to be very aware of your mirrors for changing lanes. But don't overdo the mirrors at the same time. Neve Ryan, I'm in I'm trouble to remember the theory. Have you any tips for studying? Uh, we can get the theory test app. You could... Uh, check out my videos. You could get the CD-ROM and do practice CD practice tests by getting the CD-ROM. Just go to theorytest.ie for um, that. Uh, on on, on theorytest.ie, you'll see the website address there. Theorytest.ie. You can there's a section there for uh, learning materials, and you'll get some some good products there. Okay, and the best look to you, Caitlin Riley. Is it a grade two if you touch off the curb? Yeah, it's usually a grade two if, if you hit the curb hard. Or you mount the curb though, it could be a grade three, Caitlin. So it depends on the on the level of the mistake, okay? But usually a grade two, um, depending on how hard you hit it. Quick question, is Navin hard to do the driving test in, says Wayne Griffin. Don't know Wayne Griffin, but I always believe in the harder you work, the luckier you'll get. So whether it's Navin or Cavan or Belfast or even Dingle, if you put the work in, put the practice in, it can be very doable in any of those places, okay? But I, I don't know, I don't have any first-hand info on Navin, so sorry to sorry about that. Verenda Singh, in a single lane road, a cyclist going on ahead of me and both lanes divided by a continuous lane, by a continuous line, I think you mean, 
uh, then can we overtake him if there is no vehicles? Yeah, you can because what's practical will will win out over a rigid interpretation of the rules of the road. Okay, so if it sometimes in driving you have to do what's practical. So you can overtake a cyclist on a continuous white line if it's safe to do so. If you can get out and in safely without obstructing anybody, because the drive the cyclist should be going slower, so you should be able to get it done quicker. But yes is the answer. But just be careful. Make sure it's safe to do so. But you know we have to be practical on the road. Uh, Wayne Griffin, quick question is an oh, I think I, I think I answered that. Sorry. Um, let's see then, folks. So, just gonna get through these comments here now again, answering some questions here for you. Is the rollback while putting the handbrake down, for instance, at a T junction? Is it well? It can be a major mistake. Sagweep, um, Sagweep can. It can be a major mistake if you roll if it rolls back far. But if you keep the car under some kind of control, it shouldn't be too serious. Okay. As long as it doesn't roll back too much, as always, it depends on the on how the, on how much it rolls back. Okay, Sean Deegan, do you have a video going through a test from start to finish? Not really. Um, I haven't done any really on that, but I have lots of commentary drive videos. I've lots of on driving test tips ones, Sean, but not not a mock test. Hope to do them in future though. Aman, the place in Kildare is Mondello Park. Ah, oh, thank you, Aman. Whoever you are there, Aman, great. Mondello Park. Um. I I think that's the that's the place that you're saying is where you can do the the driving kind of off road so it's, it'll be away from the public roads. Mondello Parks. Thank you for clarifying that. CJ driver then. Sorry to correct you. The circle with the cross does not mean no entry. Um, it means no parking. Normally it has times. Yes, that's right. Did someone? I'm not sure if someone said it, but number five is a clear way there. Um. So it me so, so the 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 circle with the cross number five the circle with the cross yeah is a clear way so that's no parking um uh, or no stopping during the time shown uh no entry is number one yeah I'm not sure if I said that there or somebody else okay so number five is a uh, clear way and number one is is no entry um and then CJ driver says loves Travis he's super yeah he's a great great instructor he makes great videos comes across as an absolute gentleman. Uh, so Travis Driving School, check out his channel, folks. Um, let's see what else we have here now. Jenny or Jesse can I think Leinster School of Driving, they're great and have a practice track. Yeah, I think that might be it actually. Leinster School of Driving. Thank you for that, Je uh, Jesse Can Leinster School of Driving. They have an off-road place. I think they were they, they, they had a TV show there maybe a couple of years ago. Leinster School of Driving, yeah. Thanks for clarifying. Craig Dia um Diario, I think. Uh, Viva Na Irlanda. Any tip to turn right from a major road to a minor road? Uh, I fell difficult to find the middle lane of the minor road, especially when I don't know the road. Uh, well, practice really, Craig, if I'm saying your name correctly, there. practice driving lessons. Um, you know, I'm not. I'm not quite sure the question. You find it difficult to find the middle lane of the minor road. I'm not sure what you quite say. Is it a multi-lane road you're talking about? You can email me at daintai at gmail.com. Maybe, maybe I can answer that to you. But realistically, it's all about practice, you know. Um, let's see what else you have here, folks. Going to get through a few more comments before we finish up. Uh, thank you very much for politely answering the question. This is Svervanti Thotta. Not sure if this is silly query as i apply for learner permit wondering should i buy a car and get insurance or wait till i finish edt lessons well it's up to you you i mean you have to just i, I would definitely shop around anyway and get some information from the insurance companies and see if, see what kind of quotes they're giving you um but really it's up to you um you can still get insured on a car while you're doing your edt lessons and it could be expensive though uh, but really, it's up to you um, when you buy the car or get the insurance. Um, it's definitely no harm to, to be looking into it and getting the information up front. Uh, and the best of luck to you doing that. Um, Billy Z Zulueta, hi then. Could you please give me advice on what what will I do if there is a cyclist in front and we're on a narrow road with a solid white line in the middle of the road? Can I cross the line? Yes, you can cross the line. Of course you can. Just make sure it's safe to do so. Uh, make sure that you're not going to be obstructing anybody make sure you're not too blind but if you're like just watch the body language of cyclists as well because if you think the cyclist might be turning off left or right in the future there might be no need to overtake him then you know and um, if the cyclist is going downhill maybe again there's no need because he might be picking up some speed 
But if you want to drive in a practical way, then you are going to have to overtake the cyclist on the solid white line. It's not ideal. I mean, technically you shouldn't cross the solid white line, but there's always going to be exceptions. And practical driving usually wins out over a rigid interpretation of the laws of the road, okay? Top three first cars, Ben Hunter. Top three first cars. Okay, not quite sure what that is, but thanks for tuning in, Ben. Verenda Singh, thank you, Dane. You're very welcome, Verenda. Uh, glad to help you. Queeve uh, Power, I think, in Wexford, are they taking people on the modern roundabout for the test lately? I, not that I'm aware of. Um, they used to years ago when the test center used to be at the modern, but not so much anymore. To the best of my knowledge, they don't go down that far usually. But then again, you know, they could. N Rose, tips for the night before a driving test? Well, get a good night's sleep. Um, get, a, get a good breakfast the next day if you can. Uh, don't forget to breed. Eat some strawberries if you can, especially if you're extra strawberries. And maybe watch a few videos and just try not to stress too much because the night before the driving test, you have to understand that you've, you've probably done as much as you can do at this stage and there's not much else that you can do that's going to drastically alter the result anyway. So the best thing you can probably do is keep calm and just say what will be, will be. Kevin McSweeney, the Great Dane. Yes, get in lane with the Great Dane, Kevin. Uh, so thank you very much for tuning in. Okay, folks, that, that's nearly it for now. Just want to say a big thank you to you all for tuning in. Uh, just briefly, if you have any uh, questions, if you'd like me to look at your report sheet, email me at daintai at gmail.com. Um, Cervanti, thank you. You're very welcome, Cervanti. Glad to help. Daintai at gmail.com. I will email you back within a day or two. If you're asking me to look over your report sheet, please give me some information as to what went wrong and what the tester said. I appreciate more information. Phil Hall, where do they normally bring you on your driving test run? Well, they bring you anywhere around Wexford Town, Phil Hall. It could be anywhere around Clonard, Tesco, um, down by Pettit Super Value, um, all like anywhere within the town. They generally don't go along the quay or on the main roads too much. They usually stay around town. Uh, CJ Driver, are ADIs allowed to teach people who have a test book now when they are not essential, please? Um, yeah, I, I, I believe so, CJ. Um, it, if, if someone has a has a driving test, they are allowed, because cause the RSA are giving people, the are giving non-essential tests at the moment, so if, if anybody's non-essential and they've been waiting a while, they are getting offered tests. So I would certainly do it anyway, if, if, if it was me. Um, and Ben Hunter says, first car to buy something around 5k. Yeah, I'd say something small like Ford Fiesta, Opel Corsa, Nissan Micra. I would check out Ben Hunter. I would check out What Car or some kind of review websites on cars to help you out there. And definitely test drive them anyway. But something small, something handy. Like, like uh, you know, I, like, I've always had Opel Corsas, for example, but I'm slightly biased there. Um, but uh, yeah, shop around and, uh, you know, something small. Like if you're going to be driving in town mostly, I'd say kind of a petrol car. If you're going to be driving more on the open roads, probably a diesel car, although they're going to be phased out as time goes on. Uh, but best of luck to you anyway, Ben. Uh, anyway, yeah, email me dayandtai at gmail.com if any other questions. ndls.ie if, if you have any questions need to be answered on your driving licensing. There's a 10-month extension now on the permits. So the um, calculator is going to be very useful there on that website, ndls.ie. You can just type in your um, expiry date and it'll tell you how long you have left on your learner permit. Uh, theorytest.ie to book your theory test and you'll find some great learning tools there. If you're looking to book your driving test, myroadsafety.ie, that's the place to do it. You can manage your booking there. If you would like to support me by making a voluntary donation, you can do so by PayPal. Any, any support is very much appreciated. And finally, the signs here then for anybody interested in these signs. Number one, no entry. Number two, dead end. Number three, dangerous bends ahead. Number four, road works. Number five, clear way. Number six, road narrows on both sides. Number seven, pedestrianized street. Number eight, turn left. Number nine, hospital ahead. Any other comments there now? Um, Ify McIndera, I think, how long do you have to wait an essential work for driving test? It all depends. It could be 12, 16 weeks. If you fill out the, the essential worker form, you may get the test quicker. You may get an urgent test quicker. So it all depends on the test center. Like It could be longer in Tala because the waiting list in Tala is a lot longer than the rest of the country. So it all depends. CJ Driver, wonderful informative video. So you're very welcome, CJ. Glad to have you here and best wishes to you. And Ben Hunter, thank you too, Ben Hunter. 
So folks, that's going to be it for now. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate the support. My email is there if you'd like to email me. And I just want to wish you all the best with your driving. If you have a test coming up, the very best of luck. Uh, I hope you do well. And uh, all the best. And stay safe out there. Thanks again. All the best.